Cheaper, cleaner food. That's the goal of version 2 of my AI-powered sprayer drone. The concepts are simple. Use AI to spray only the weeds that are in a field. That reduces the chemicals that are applied when you compare it to spraying the entire field, which is what's often done today. That means cleaner food. Second, use automation to reduce the labor that's put into a field. For example, you can push in a new battery right here while ejecting the old battery over here and putting it into a recharge station. While you have it there, you can go ahead and refill the sprayer tank right here and then send the drone out on a new mission. All that's done without human labor. It's done with automation, which means a lot cheaper food because you've got less costs going into that field. The goal of these videos is to teach you, electronics enthusiasts, implement sprayers, small holding farmers, how to build this as well as the landing pad and battery swap station. Artificial intelligence and automation are not magic and they shouldn't cost a million dollars to use on your farm. So take this idea, implement it, improve it, and especially share it so that all farmers and all consumers can get a slice of that cheaper, cleaner food. Here you see an example flight. In the top right is the computer with a uh, pre-planned mission that controls where the drone flies. In the bottom right you can see the images being taken and classified by the drone as it flies. It only turns on the sprayer when it identifies a weed below the drone, so when the text turns red here it's identified a weed. You can see that it always stays about two meters or six feet off the ground. That's because we have a downward facing lidar and we uh, follow the terrain of what's below us. Also, we've got really clear photos coming in despite the downwash from those rotors because we have a global shutter camera on our Raspberry Pi. Let's just watch this for a couple more seconds and pick it up as it lands. When the drone completes its flight, it returns to the landing pad, and then it's gathered from the landing pad into a battery swap and refill bay. There's three battery bays on each side of the drone, and whichever battery is fully charged is inserted into the drone while the old battery is ejected into a bay to recharge. Liquid from the reservoir is pumped to refill the drone, and finally the drone is pushed out of the swap bay and into the landing pad where it's loaded with a new flight plan, and off it goes. That cycle repeats constantly. Here's a quick before and after photo of the area that I first focused on spraying. You can see that the blackberry plants are uh, turning brown while the native grasses around it stay green. My goal with this video series is to show how this was made, step by step, and support those videos with the info in the GitHub. So all the 3D models, code, schematics, etc. are located at the GitHub that's linked in the description below. So that means, um, one, how to print and build the drone and battery cages. Two, how to build the landing pad, swap station, and recharge base. Three, how to set up the computer that controls that landing pad uh, via Arduino and Autoit, and then the drone via a mission planner, ArduPilot, uh, and GPS, as well as creating waypoints files so that you can actually get this thing up and flying. And then four, setting up the computer that classifies images. That's uh, our little Raspberry Pi that does AI. Uh, and creating a custom image classification model for the plants that are in your field. But, um, you know, before we do all those longer detailed videos, I think it's worth, uh, with this video, just to have a deeper look at the drone and the landing pad, and I think it'll give some context for all the details that are going to be covered later. This is the landing pad, and this is the battery swap and restill fill station for this drone right here. Now, there's four interesting things in this drone. First off, the whole frame is 3D printed. Why? Well. All of these columns and cross members are hollow. They are tubes and they are all connected to each other. That allows us to fill liquid right here and then spray it through this motor and then these spray nozzles right down here. So this is a sprayer drone. It's meant to spray weeds. Uh, in the previous version we had a small tank and we would often run out of liquid before the mission was over. Because this whole thing is now a 3D printed tube, basically, uh, we always have enough liquid to complete our missions and get a refill so that we can go back out. The second thing is standard uh, from the, the last drone that we had. We've got a RTK uh, GPS, this is a HERE 3 GPS, it gets us, you know, centimeter level precision. And then this cube orange with Mission Planner and Ardu Pilot allow us to fly uh, set missions. And then last thing, we've got the LiDAR, downward facing LiDAR here, keeps us about two meters or about six feet off the ground. The next thing is we have this nice camera right here. It's a global shutter camera connected to our Raspberry Pi Zero 2W right here. That moves all of our image classification on board. So we're using a custom AI model for image classification to tell the difference between if there is uh, blackberries or prairie grass 
below the drone as it's traveling forward. So we snap shots right here, we process them right here, and then if we determine that there are weeds present, we turn on the sprayer that's right here and suck the juice out of these tubes right here through the sprayer and then out the nozzles and kill those weeds as we're flying over them. The last big upgrade that this thing has is a totally revised battery system. So previously we had to use four cell batteries and I hacked the batteries apart and put copper tape directly on them. This is a battery, 3D printed battery cage. That means that we can take this battery out, it's another four cell battery, and we can replace it with anything we want, another, you know, another type of four cell battery. That's because all of the ports in here have been preserved. This is the power and ground, and this is the uh, uh, balance charger. Now if you look at the top here, we actually have exposed balance charging ports right up here, and those will get charged down below. And then uh, on the bottom here we have copper tape, and that copper tape is connected to the power and ground that you see in here. So that this battery right here does have all of its leads exposed, but we didn't have to hack the battery apart to get there. It also makes this thing very standard. So we can easily pop this battery in here, and as it's going in, it powers right up. Now, because this is a rigid frame in here, we can then insert another battery from this side, and this battery cage will be pushed out and into another charging port on the other side. So let's take a look at the landing pad next. So when a drone finishes its mission, it tries to land on this landing pad right over here. That's about six feet by eight feet. Um, now we do have centimeter level position, but there's wind and this thing can get moved around right before it lands. So I wanted to put it on something really big like this so I could be sure that I could pull it in and always know that I've got it before I do the battery swap. On every mission in Mission Planner that we uh, create, the last couple waypoints take this thing on a path from right over there towards this uh, landing pad right here and then down onto the landing pad. What that does is it ensures that this drone is facing forward and lands in this orientation right here with the funnel facing forward. That way when we trap this thing right over here and do all of our refills and battery swaps, we know the orientation of this thing. So let's go ahead and pretend that this just landed and I'll walk you through step by step how this thing gets its battery swapped and gets its liquids refilled before it takes off on another mission. Now, I have this running in demo mode, which means I can control each step and when it starts. Uh, in reality, you would run this thing and it would just uh, continually run step after step until it had completed and sent the drone back out on its next mission. The first step is this arm right over here is going to move in that direction so that it traps the drone up against that bar right there. These little motors down here have both turned on and what that does is it moves this chain drive along and this bar right here slowly comes in contact with the drone right here. You can see that on the other side we've got that same motor pushing the drone and pushing the drone. Now there is no uh, contact stop here. Instead what we have, this thing actually drives itself right up against that motor. And these motors are so small that it doesn't crush the drone when it gets up there. The next step is uh, right here. We've got an arm that travels along here and eventually forces the drone into this little landing area right here where we can actually do all the battery swaps. So let's start that step. You can see we've got that same motor running right here. And along here we've got this piece right here that's going to come force the drone into our little landing area right over here. Now I have this on a tarp because it's a whole lot easier. Uh, but I think that after having run this for a while, I'm going to switch over to just plywood right here. Flat on the ground plywood. This actually bunches up sometimes and causes the drone not to move as it should. So I think that moving to a plywood solution is going to be a better idea. So right there you can kind of hear the motor struggling a little bit. It's currently uh, trying its hardest to push this into place and it's, it's getting stuck on that tarp right there. Now the next thing that happens after we get this thing trapped in this little square right here is we fill the, the liquid. So you see what's happening right now is this little pump right here is actually filling our drone with liquid. Now when it completes its fill process it could actually overflow out of this port right here and then back into here so that we are sure that we got a full uh, set of liquid before we head out. Now that the arm has trapped this uh, drone in this little space right here, we're going to start using these. These are actually uh, three battery ports on each side with an arm that can push 
those uh, battery cages into the drone and then push the spent battery cage out of the drone. So first we're just gonna see these things rotate um, so that you can you know, see that they go to all three positions. So there's one position. There's the next position. And then all the way back to the initial position. There we go. So you can see that both of those can move to any position they like so that you can swap in the batteries using these arms right here. So now it's time to actually swap one of those in. Um, there's a battery sitting in this bay over here and there's a battery in the drone. Now it's actually shoved up so tight that you wouldn't be able to see anything happening. So what I'm gonna do instead is actually push this arm back and then manually push this drone out of here so that you can actually see the battery as it exits. Okay, so let's go to the next step and now you'll be able to see the battery get pushed out of here into this empty space now. And then I will also, you know, simultaneously push the battery out of here so that you can see what would happen. And that battery would usually end up in there so that it could start charging. So there you have it. You can see the battery, the value of this rigid battery cage. It actually pushes this battery cage out and ejects the spent battery cage into this reservoir over here where it can be recharged. Before we leave this uh, entirely, have a look inside here. You can see that there is copper tape uh, running all the way along that and you can see that there are five different pads and there's little ridges that separate them. So all of those uh, raised pieces of copper wire for the balance charging are actually connected right there. And then those wires in the back there are soldered together into and they connect to that uh, port right there, which connects into this balance charger right here. So every one of these ports can have its own balance charger and charge up the batteries that are in each one of those bays. Okay, let's replace things to the way they were. We've got the drone back in here. We're gonna go ahead and run this arm back up. So this is the position we find ourselves in. Fully uh, refilled on the liquid and fully recharged on the battery. Now we can continue our usual sequence. First thing is, this arm right here heads back to its neutral position, which is all the way at the back there. Next, we're going to use these two uh, linear actuators right here to eject our drone back onto the landing pad over here so that it's got a clear area to take off. Clearly, you can't take off in here. There's way too much stuff around it. Now the last step before we head out, we've got to pull this arm back so that we can get a clean takeoff. And that's it. Now this thing will be able to take off vertically without catching anything and into the sky to do another mission. Next up is building the drone. Uh, I'm going to make a playlist out of this so that you can catch all the parts to build this thing up. Or you can just hit subscribe and you'll get notified every time there's a new video in this series. Thanks. Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more unique and useful do-it-yourself builds.